Welcome to the Dragon Rider Podcast. My name is Mapaya and I am here to help fellow energy workers to stand deeper into their sovereign power through energetic surgery, inner dragon training and magical child coaching. In this podcast we talk about all the things from the energy world, trauma healing, archetypes, inner sabotaging dragon patterns so that you learn how to fly while you play here on earth together. Hello, hello and welcome to this episode where I will introduce you to three common dragons that we can find in Lightworkers. So before I introduce you to them, I want to explain to you what dragons are in my world. <clears throat> so in my world, we talk about dragons as survival archetypes of adaptations. When we are young, we grow up in a home, in a family, in a system where we felt also unsafe. So what our system did was activating survival archetypes to adapt into a situation to survive our childhood. And when we stay unconscious, these survival archetypes or dragons, as I call them, are still active in your system, in your daily life right now. And this is how we survive. This is how we feel safe, how we feel secure, how we uh, get our value, how we get our love. And so what often is the case is when we do shadow work and our spiritual practice and we find any of these dragons, then it's very easy to start shaming ourselves, blaming ourselves, making us feel unworthy um, because we're bad and wrong and selfish and hurting other people and dark, having dark energies, blah, blah, blah. And then we get into a shame loop and then we, you know, spiral down into a black hole and we don't want to do that. <laughs> we don't want to go there. So this is why I call them dragons so that it becomes easier to dis identify with these survival archetypes because these archetypes they come with patterns they come with belief systems and beliefs and they also come with thoughts so certain thoughts that you think might be connected to a survival archetype and that's why I call them dragons, because then it's easier to disidentify with these archetypes, because otherwise it's like a mesh of patterns, beliefs and thoughts. And it's so easy to identify with it. So the trick is here with doing shadow work is that whenever we shame or judge something within ourselves, it stays hidden in the uh, subconscious and unconscious that's a protection mechanism of our ego to st to feel like if we already feel we're not good enough then you better not see these patterns that you shame and judge because then you feel more not good enough and we won't survive so everything we shame and judge stays hidden and whenever we identify with a shadow or a survival archetype then we can easily go into a shame loop, shaming and judging ourselves for our shadow. And so we can't really do much shadow work there, can we? Because it stays hidden. So that's why I call them dragons, so that we can disidentify with these survival archetypes a bit easier. And then the shame loop and the judgment uh, becomes like leaves us because we we disidentify with it it's like oh it's not me it's a dragon in me it's a dragon in my system that creates this pattern that creates these beliefs that creates these thoughts 
And so it's not me who is unworthy or bad or wrong or whatever, because we, we are already enough and we have these dragons in our system. And therefore I can now choose to have a relationship with this dragon in me to love and hug that dragon and cultivate self-love that way. And so in my world, we work with dragons, with inner dragons, to learn how to, to tame them by loving and hugging these dragons, these inner dragons, so that we become dragon riders, so that we become the mother of dragons. And from that space, we don't fight with ourselves, and so we don't fight with, with our outside world. We find this inner peace because we ride our dragons instead of fighting with them. So this is why when I introduce you now to these three common light workers dragons, that if you find any of these dragons and their patterns in your system, you don't have to shame it or blame it. And if you do, because you still get triggered, then love that part of you as well. Love that part of you as well. And if you can't, then love that part that can't. Until you find the part that can. Because they are dragons that might be in your system. So I don't say everyone has these dragons, because everyone can have different ones. I'm just sharing some common ones. And you can see if, if you recognize any of these patterns. And if not, then that's fine. And if you do, then that's fine too. Uh, there's no right or wrong. There's just technical seeing what is true uh, from your experience. So you don't have to, you know, go into your mind and search for the dragon that's in your system. You, you just live your life and you recognize the pattern. Because the patterns are what you live, what you do daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. <laughs> they repeat. <laughs> so you don't you know have to go look for it. You will you will find them by just looking at patterns in your life. That's how easy this is. Alright. So the first dragon that I wanna introduce you to is Savioris. And Savioris loves to save other people in order to feel safe himself. So Savioris is, an, is a dragon that is always looking out for people to be saved. Do, does this person need help? Uh, you, uh, this dragon loves to bring your attention to other people trying to help other people, saving other people. How can I, you know, rescue uh, this person? How can I help that person? How can I support this person? And it's wiring this whole network of beliefs and thoughts and patterns that just keeps you busy with others instead of busy with yourself in order to gain safety. So Savioris, this dragon, loves to think and believe that if I save others, then I will be saved too. If, if I help others, others will help me too. And people will like me and people will won't abandon me because they need me. And so this is how I feel safe and secure and uh, I know I will survive because I won't be abandoned because people need me to save them. And Save Yoris also gets magnetically attracted to the victim in people. It's like I like Zephyrus is looking for victims. <laughs> Where can I find a victim to save? <laughs> and so I've had this dragon big time in uh, in my system. I was always thinking about how to help other people, 
uh, and it was completely wired in my whole system. And this is all that I was busy um, with on a daily basis. And this dragon even brought me in danger because I was so focused on saving and helping people that I was neglecting myself completely. So I experienced a very dark night with this dragon, a dark night of the ego. So I learned this from Robert Ohato that it's not a dark night of the soul because the soul doesn't get dark y'all. <laughs> it's the ego that gets dark because the ego identifies with these dragons and these survival archetypes. And so it's a pattern that starts to loop in itself because I was saving others in order to to feel safe myself and the moment I felt more unsafe because I was neglecting myself and constantly focusing on others then it started looping into a dark night because what happens is like oh I feel unsafe because I am not here with myself because I'm here with others so I have to save more people and <laughs> neglect myself even more and then save more people and neglect myself even more and then you get you loop into a dark night and so when this happens congratulations because it's through the dark night that you also can learn how to tame and ride these dragons because if you if you try to do that before your dark night it's like oh i see i have this dragon <laughs> but uh I'm trying to stop it, but I can't like, oh, I see I'm, I'm constantly helping and saving others. And I know I have this pattern and I'm always focusing on that. I'm always focusing on that. And oh, but I'm trying to stop it. I can't, I just can't like it's an addiction. And it is, save yours, <laughs> saving people is a fucking addiction. Not to, you know, focus on yourself always helping others and it's this whole mechanism and and technique in order to survive that gets dark eventually because you are neglecting yourself and you cannot do that on a long term it's not sustainable so as you can imagine for light workers and energy workers or quote unquote healers this can loop into your occupation into your work you know feeding this dragon through your work <laughs> this is why i wanted to share this with you because i think it's so important to um, learn to know uh save yours if you if you have this dragon in your system um so that you uh yeah become aware of it and give that dragon a hug because it wants to be safe. It wa it, that's what it wants. It, it wants safety. It wants, it wants love. It wants love. That's why it's doing that. So we don't fight dragons because they will just breathe more fire. We want to give them hugs and love. And uh, you want safety. I will give you that safety because I love me. So up to the next dragon the second dragon is called messiana and messiana is the messiah complex maybe you've heard of it or maybe you've experienced it or within yourself or with others and the dragon messiana believes that it's the next messiah it's such a powerful energy worker light worker and messiana realized that beliefs influences your reality and so messiana starts believing that you can save the whole world with your power alone and the drive behind that is if i can save the world then i will finally be enough then i will finally be loved everyone will love me that's when I feel the most safe. And so Messiana can sometimes be an underground dragon that is fueling some projects to save the world, especially in this time where, you know, <laughs> the world kind of needs saving if we want to survive. So Messiana is a dragon that that's very seasonable because 
in these times where it, where the earth is shifting from an old paradigm to a new paradigm, it's like the world needs savings. <laughs> so all the Messianas are <laughs> coming out and trying to save the world. Um, but the thing is, this dragon will loop dark as well. So if, if there's any project or business fueled by this dragon's energetics, it's not going to be sustainable. And we can see all these gurus and uh, people who present themselves as a messiah on the internet. They probably have the dragon messiana in their system. And it's all, all okay because that dragon will loop itself dark as well. And then, you know, when they hug that dragon and love themselves through it, they can evolve into beautiful, genuine light workers with their feet on the ground and actually, you know, really be helpful in saving the world, but not from a place of wanting to save the world, but from a place of leading themselves wing to wing with other people and not like I'm up here on this pedestal, but genuine self leadership wing to wing to other people and from that place actually be of service to the whole. Now, and the last dragon that I want to talk about today is called Mardra. Dun, dun, dun. And Mardra, I'm still dealing with her. <laughs> oh my God, that's that's a huge dragon for me as well. So Mar and Mardra is very connected to church wirings in our system because Mardra is the martyr archetype and, and Mardra is all about Jesus died for your sins so you better live on your knees because you are not enough and if you want to be enough and you want to be saved by Jesus and be loved by God you better suffer and experience pain and torture yourself for punishment. You have to punish yourself because you are born with original sin. And so the more you torture yourself to punish yourself, the more God will love you and Jesus will rescue you. This is an imprint of the church that is kind of twisted um, and can create a lot of pain and suffering in our lives. Um, so I, f I found this dragon in my system. I still, I'm still working with it. It's very deep. And even like I have been raised atheist. My, both of my parents were raised atheist and still I have this also in my system. This is how deep this goes. And so it's very connected also to receiving money and receiving love because you are unworthy and you have original sin or original shame that you first have to punish yourself uh, for that sin and for that shame uh, because you're not good enough and therefore you're not allowed to receive money you're not allowed to receive love and so this dragon blocks energetically your uh, channel to receive the things that are that are good for you and that makes you a healthy person and you know all the abundance and health and and love that you desire so so this is a, a dragon that can go really, really, really dark. Uh, so good to become aware of this and find this in your system. Again, it's like when we find these dragons, we need to love them. This is so important. We really need to give them hugs. They are here because they are wired in a way that they believe that the pattern of the dragon actually helps you with gaining safety and gaining love and gaining the things but the opposite is true and so it's it's like some kind of energetic mind fuck um and w but the thing is that when we start to hate and blame and shame these dragons we make you you put like oil on the fire that that dragon breathes so that's why we nurture these parts of ourselves, these dragons that are within us. So a simple example of Mardera uh, and her pattern is, for example, if 
you are with someone else uh, outside and it's cold and you you wear uh, a jacket and the other person is wearing a short t-shirt and the other person is cold and you're saying like you know what here wear my jacket and so you give that in order to be loved and liked and safe and secure but in the meantime you are actually super cold <laughs> and so that other person is are you sure you want to give this jacket aren't you cold and you say like no no i'm fine you know like i'm good but in reality you're not and you're actually super cold and then you kind of expect a thank you and gratitude and love from this person that's that's why you do it and then when this person uh, uh, does something that you don't like or doesn't say the thank you or doesn't show that gratitude then Mardera is like oh my god you are such a narcissist and so ungrateful because look at what I have done for you and how much I have suffered for you it's like I'm like being in uncomfortable positions and being in uncomfortable and discomfort for you and then that person is like, why are you doing that? Like, I didn't even know you were hurting yourself or punishing yourself. And this is where um, Mardera can really fuck up relationships as well. So all of these dragons are consciously not making any sense. But that's why most of them are in our unconscious. <laughs> and they're like, these dragons are flying around in our unconscious, having all these patterns. Uh, managing our safety and our esteem and our survival um, and being loved, not being abandoned, being liked, all based on feeling not good enough as you are, which is also, uh, you, you know, this imprint from the church that says you are not good enough as you are, you, you are born with sin and you have to do X, Y, Z, whatever the fuck, in order to become good enough. And then we get into the hamster wheel of the healing <laughs> trap, all loops, shame loops, all over the place, never ending story, until you love these dragons and give them hugs, surrender to the dark night process, keep on loving and hugging them, even through this process, and I know that's easier said than done. That's why we can use our spiritual practices like meditation and guided meditations and energy surgery and yoga and breath work or whatever you use for your spiritual practice to help you with, you know, taming these dragons and by loving and hugging them and become the mother of dragons, a dragon rider. And remember, you can not slay or kill a dragon because you cannot get rid of a dragon. A dragon will always stay in your system, but you can love and hug it so that you can ride it. <sighs> Give yourself a hug, take a few deep breaths. <sighs> you are loved, you are enough, and you are safe. And remember that you don't have to go into your head, into your mind, finding these dragons. These dragons are patterns and these patterns repeat themselves in your life. So if any of these dragons that I introduced you to today are holding patterns that you recognize in your life, that's how you know. I want to take a moment to honor your bravery and courage to have listened to the end of this podcast. I know we went really deep. <sighs> we take a moment to honor that. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I wish you a beautiful day. <sighs>